A new study published in Science Advances provides evidence that the Earth formed much more rapidly than the current theory allows for, leading to the speculation of an alternative model for the formation of the Earth and therefore other planets too. Let's examine their findings and speculate how this evidence in fact suggests an even more radical approach. The mainstream model for the formation of the Earth is a long and slow process. It is believed that the Sun formed through the gravitational collapse of a huge dust and gas cloud. During this material was distributed around the newly formed star, this material would slowly over time form larger and larger chunks through random collisions. Once enough material had accreted it would start to attract more and more until a spherical body was formed. This means that a planet would be composed of a wide variety of different materials from this initial debris cloud and would have taken a very long time to form, maybe as much as a billion years. New research published from Science Advances throws both of these assumptions into question. They analysed the iron composition of Earth's interior and compared it to extraterrestrial bodies. They discovered that the composition of the Earth was almost identical to one particular type of meteorite. And this meant that Earth could not have formed from a variety of different collisions, but must have been formed only from this one type. This in turn implies that the Earth must have formed very rapidly. They believe that this formation was through this accretion process, but just very rapidly in the space of about 5 million years, rather than a much longer period of time. One other interesting finding was that it implied an alternative source for the water acquisition on Earth. They believe that the results indicate that the water was accreted on Earth through this initial dust which had absorbed water. This early accretion of water onto Earth is supported by water that is found deep in Earth's mantle. They go on to suggest that this may mean that all planets would form with water and could mean that life could be a byproduct of this formation process. There are a number of alternative ways that we can look at this. Firstly, they provide no mechanism to allow for this rapid accretion process. What would cause this to be so much quicker than it was before? In the past I have examined Alvin's planetary formation process and his later modification using the jet stream concept. Now this would allow for a more rapid accretion process and interestingly would allow for the creation of these streams of matter which would indeed keep them separate, making it appear as if it came from a single source. I also find the origin of the water in the mantle an interesting one, and this reminds me again of Eugene's ultra-deep biosphere concept. The water in this initial dust cloud would not be very habitable, but if the Earth formed in a series of phases, with the core part forming first and water being created in this initial phase, could microbes have found a way to colonise this area very early on? This is clearly not a very habitable place, but we already know how hardy some of these microbes can be. Was this their ideal starting point? Now another model to consider is the electric universe concept of the ejection of a body from the star. This would potentially create an iron content which would be uniform at the time of ejection. One interesting question that this raises for me is would a planet ejected at a later time have the same identical fingerprint or did the iron content depend on the plasma of the surface and the other elements that were present at the time? If it is fairly consistent, could this identify which star produced which planet? The problem here is we would need to have samples from the mantle of various planets, which obviously at the moment we do not have. Now one other question that this raises is that of the origin. If only one type of meteorite matches the iron content found in Earth, and the majority of the other meteorites have a much higher content of iron, then where did these other meteorites come from? One theory from the EU suggests that the Earth was part of Saturn. This used to be our star. Any planet that formed around this may have a different composition of iron. You would also expect that the meteorites that surrounded this star, Saturn, would also be different. So would the Sun therefore have a different set of meteorites with its own composition of elements? Could this explain why the majority of these do not match the composition of the Earth's core? Now this raises some interesting questions that are worthy of exploring further. Do the meteorites that are part of Saturn's extended ring 
match the iron content of the Earth? Do other planets in the solar system have a different iron content that matches some of the other meteorites, implying a different birthplace? As always, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time.